Okay, we have here today another integral from the UNSW Integration B from 2020. This was semifinal round two, problem one. We have the integral from zero to infinity, x to the two n, e to the minus x squared, dx. And just note for this n value, we have this condition over here that n is gonna be a positive integer. Okay, I was thinking this problem is actually pretty similar to one we had a few days back, where instead of e to the minus x squared, I think we had ln x to the n there. So kind of similar, and this was like x to the m. Anyway, what I wanted to do is approach it kind of a similar way. And the first problem I noticed really, having x squared here, we really don't like having something like that on the exponential. So what I can do is try to deal with that with a u substitution. I'm just gonna make my u equal to x squared. And then I'll go ahead, we'll get a derivative. So du is gonna be just two x dx. And also I think it might be useful to just solve for x. So we'll just take square root of both sides here and we'll find that x is gonna be equal to square root of u. Now, before we substitute, I'm actually just gonna rearrange things a little bit because I wanna set this up. I wanna set up where I have my du ready to go. So like, I'm gonna create a 2x dx over here. But so I'm not changing it. Let's just divide by 2x. So this piece, this here will just be one. And then we'll have all the other stuff. I'll just copy that down. Okay, so now we'll just go ahead and substitute. So first of all, updating our bounds. We plug in infinity, infinity squared, still gonna be infinity and we plug a zero in, we still get zero for the lower bound. And actually one thing I forgot, let's take this x to the two n. I'm just gonna rearrange it and write it as x squared to the n, just to make the substitution clear, because x squared is gonna be u. So I can write this piece as u to the n. And then I'll take this, what I can do is take this two here and bring it out front as one half. So we'll have one half here. And then for this x, we saw for that being squared u, so I'll write this squared u right here then this is gonna become e to the minus u, and then we have this piece right here is gonna be our du, and so that takes care of that x squared. Now here, because we have the same base, we have u in both these. When I rewrite this, I can actually write this as u to the n minus one half. But by doing that, now we have this whole thing right here, this integral is in the form of the gamma function. Okay, now here we have our formula for the gamma function where we just have our variable as x instead of u. Now the real thing to notice here is we have this n in the integral, and that's gonna be our input into the gamma function. Now, the only thing is on our integral, we actually have n minus one half here, so it's not quite the same. What I can actually do is rewrite this exponent to get it into the same format. So I can actually write this as n plus one half minus one. So now if this is the gamma function, the input here on the variable is gonna be n plus one half. So this whole thing now is gonna be the same thing as gamma of n plus one half. So putting this all together, what we're gonna have is we're gonna have gamma of n plus one half all over this one half or over two. And then we could just use this as the formula for this integral, but what I'd like to do is let's see if we can get a simple, let's see if we can simplify this gamma of n plus one half a little bit. And so what I usually find useful in a case like this is to express the gamma function in terms of a factorial. Even though the factorial is usually for integers, we can still use it here to simplify our answer. Just notice again, remember our n value is gonna be a positive integer. So for gamma of n plus one half, let's just imagine a scenario, like let's pretend gamma, let's just look at n equals four, for example. So for n equals four for this thing, this is gonna be the same thing as gamma of nine halves. But using this definition, we could also write this as seven halves factorial. And then we could just expand this out, decreasing each term by one. So we go seven halves times five halves times three halves times one half. And then for this last piece, I'll write it as minus one half factorial. Now for this value minus a half factorial, what I like to do usually just memorize this one because it comes in handy so often. So the value for this is going to be actually the square root of pi. So then by just memorizing this piece, all we need to do is calculate this right here. But you can kind of see we have this pattern where we're just decreasing by two here. So what we can do actually with this numerator is write this in terms of a double factorial. And then also we notice in the denominator with the number of twos, it's the same as this number here, four. We actually have four terms. So we could actually write this here as two to the four. So using this and getting back to our gamma of n plus one half, this is actually gonna be the same. Using this definition, this is gonna be the same thing as n minus one half factorial. But then just getting a common denominator here, writing this as bringing a two over two here, so we have two n over two, I could actually express this as two n minus one over two factorial. But expanding this thing out, it's just gonna be something like two n minus one over two times two n minus three over two times 2n minus five over two, and this will go all the way to one half, and then minus one half factorial, but we're just gonna write that as square root of pi. 
But again, we have that pattern here where we're decreasing by two. So I can actually express this denominator as 2n minus one double factorial. And then again, like this, the number of twos we have is the same as n. So this is gonna be two over n. And then we're just gonna have our square root of pi. So now we just need to take this and we'll plug it back in here to finish it off. Okay, now writing in our value for gamma of n plus one half, we're gonna have two n minus one double factorial. And then we're gonna have this two n in the denominator, but we're multiplying by two. So I can write this as two to the n plus one, multiplying those together times square root of pi. And that's it. Okay, so there you have it. Good problem from UNSW 2020. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.